Welcome, 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 Be Holy, Be Perfect community. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. I greet you in the name of the Lord and our Savior, Jesus, the Christ, the Anointed One. And may the blood of the Lamb cover you. May the blood of the Lamb, what? Make you become and cause you to become an overcomer because we overcome what? Through the blood and by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of what our testimony and we have discussed what testimony uh, really means so let us be overcomers through and by the blood of the lamb of our lord and savior the prince of peace the prince of peace the king of kings and lord of lord let us what be priest unto god for he has made us what priest and kings unto him and when he make us prince and kings unto him that means that what he give us authority 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 in his kingdom today in the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye and the pride of life we're talking about the lust of the eye and now we're on four of the different uh elements of the lust of the eye in which is what discontentment discontentment now when we talk about discontentment we are talking about being dissatisfied we're not satisfied with what we are who we are what we have how we have it how we get it we're just not we're not satisfied we're uh uh, we are at an unrest. We are un. We are restful. Uh, see, discontentment uh, goes into unrestful. A lot of times, when we talk about discon discontentment, we we leave it there and take do not understand what the principle of discontentment is. Discontentment is a restlessness. It's not being satisfied with where we are, who we are, and when we are discontented, we devalue ourselves. Or we overestimate ourselves, or we be uh, we have uh, a spirit of haughtiness, and because of that spirit of haughtiness, we can never be satisfied because haughtiness, pride, always reach beyond uh, the level of it its degree of where it is uh, in any area. Now, what do I mean by degree of any area? It may be uh, haughtiness. Uh, is at a 10 in a person's life, but they really, uh, in reality, <laughs> they're at a 5. So this can cause problems. And as we talk about discontentment, let us uh, keep in our mind, at the forefront of our mind, it means to be restless and to be dissatisfied. James 4 and 2, you are jealous and, co and covet what others have and your desire goes unfulfilled. So you become murderers. To hate is to murder. As far as your hearts are concerned, you burn with envy and anger and are not able to obtain the gratification, the contentment, and the happiness that you seek. So you fight and you war. So you fight and you war. So you fight and you war. You do not have because you do not ask. And then he goes on to say, and when you do ask, you ask the miss. And when you ask the miss, that means you really don't have, you really don't have it in your heart uh, to know what you're truly asking for. Um, now, as he say, he said, what happens, uh, what goes on in a situation where you have a group of people that are discontent or are not satisfied with themselves and with each other? <laughs> What well, what will happen? Let's talk about what will happen. What? They will what? They will become murderers. Murderers with a mouth through slander, backbiting, finding fault, and what? And then what? To the point where they hate. Hate to hate is to what? Murder as for your hearts are con as far as your hearts are concerned. So they be they they like uh, do passive aggression and they have concealed hate in their heart because they're what they're jealous and they covet what other people have. And, and even in the in, in in fellowship, people can dislike the uh, pastor because they want to have that position and they are not qualified or they just not, you know, they just not they don't have that position or they crave for a position they crave and why do people crave for positions because they feel inadequate uh and they find they worth in titles and positions uh and this is just this is human nature and this is what happened when we live in a fallen and broken world and we succumb 
and we live according to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. So we have it here. And he explained that to us what in very simplified form. Isaiah 32 and 6, For the fool speaketh folly, and his mind plans iniquity. His mind plans iniquity. His mind plans crookedness, something that deviates from the word of the Lord. Practicing profane, ungodly, and speaking error concerning the Lord, leaving the cravings of the hungry unsatisfied and causing the drunk and causing the drink of the thirsty to fail, causing you can drink all you want, but you will never, never feel or fulfill the thirst. Why? Because what the water or the drink that you get cannot uh, fulfill that craving because that craving has what become twisted. The craving has become twisted. And this is what he say for the food speakers falling in. Uh, and his mind plans iniquity. And so when we are discontented, um, when we are discontented, we're never satisfied or we're not satisfied in some areas of our life, what our mind will begin to plan uh, different things to make us satisfied so we can be satisfied. And when we go into that, what we will begin to practice uh, profaneness, ungodliness, and speak errors concerning the word of God. In other words, when we crave something to the point where we're discontented and we're dissatisfied, we will begin to twist the word so it what? So we try to make the word confirm to our twistedness because of our what? Our, uh, we're not satisfied and we're discontented. And we see that we see that uh, it's like a flag or banner flying in most uh, congregations. Uh, and this is why we have a lot of discontent, a lot of uh, antagonism and uh, strife uh, in the different fellowships is because of some all these cravings or somebody being unsatisfied. And when they try to fulfill that and get that gratification, uh, they will come up against someone that says no. And when they say no, then the war is on. And that's how it is. That's how it is. It's no, it's no mystery. It's no like, uh, uh, you don't need a, 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 a PhD or in uh, spiritual things to understand this. It's when somebody can't have what they want and that cravings overpower them to the point that they will murder someone, not only just in their heart, but in physically, they will do begin to murder people with their mouth, uh, degrade them, slander them. Uh, find fault in them. And this is what you see when you see people, when they constantly find fault in other people. What is the problem? You know, uh, there must be some value in people that we can see. And when we only see fault, it is why? Because we are unsatisfied with ourselves and we see ourselves unsatisfied, discontented in someone else that we want what they have and can't have it. Hebrews 13 and 5, and we've spoke about this before. Let your character, your moral essence, your inner nature be free from the love of money. Shine greed, be financially ethical. And what do you mean by being financially ethical? When we talk about ethics, we talk about, uh, we have to talk about ethics as it pertains to the word of God, not worldly ethics, but as it pertains to the world of God. So the word of God should govern our ethics, our morality, our morals, our standard. Uh, and so when he talk about financial uh, ethics, he's basically saying, you know, be honest in, in uh, with yourselves and with others uh, about your finances and don't steal uh, something that don't belong to you. Being content with what you have, for he has said, I will never under any circumstances desert you nor give you up or leave you without support, nor will I in any degree leave you helpless, nor will I forsake or let you down or relax my hold on you assuredly not. And we've heard this before and we say it again because we need to be reassured that God uh, will provide. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He will provide for us. He is Jehovah Rapha. Uh, uh, he will provide. So let us 
be assured that God will support us. He will support us, but we must put our trust in God. If we put our trust uh, uh, as the what? In the pride of life. And we, when we say the pride of life, pride of life means that we do everything on our own and we give no recognition to God, you know, and, you know, this is why when people, they say, oh, you know, uh, I succeeded. I, I, you know, I succeeded. I accomplished. I got my master's degree. Well, you wouldn't have gotten your master's degree if God had given you the ability and what the 20,000 breath and 24, 24 hours that you breathe in order to get it. So let's give God his honor. Let's give God his glory. And then, and then he will reveal to us what his plan is for our life and his purpose. And he provide for us when we walk in his purpose. When we walk in his purpose, we can be assured that he will support us in all that we need according to his riches and glories in Christ Jesus. And what do he say? He say, in the anointed one, Jesus. In Jesus, the anointed one. So what do that mean? That means that we need to be in Jesus, the anointed one, to receive what? To receive what? To receive the blessings of God. And to receive what? All that he provides according to his riches and glories in heaven. So now we see that uh, to be discontented is to be satisfied. So let us be satisfied. And if we're not, ask God. We first of all repent because God said we shouldn't be discontented. We should be content in all that he provides for us. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he shine his face upon you and give you peace. May you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord.